and I believe I do that um, maybe oh it's the collision with 2D so um, so I kind of show you the simulation here um, as but I you know I don't play with the simulation as much do I even run it even once it's possible that I don't even run it once and they've updated this this simulation. It used to be a flash simulation. Okay, I think I did run it once. It used to be a flash simulation, uh, which you know, um, with the modern computers was a lot of hassle to run. But um, because it's a popular simulation, FAT um, I assume made it a priority to update it. So there's an HTML5 version of it on their website. So let me just demonstrate some of the things that can be done with the simulation to show um, the kind of the interesting things that can be shown. So fed.colorado.edu. Uh, so I'm going to go to simulations. And I think if you just go to physics and search for something called a collision lab. Yeah, that's right there. And it's a HTML5, beautiful. It runs on any device, runs on your mobile devices, runs anything that can run, um, that, that can run um, the modern web browser. So uh, I want to work a little bit with the 2D. Let me just see what's an intro that might be interesting. Um, not much. I think I have basically these two masses and that's it. I don't have any ability to change. I mean, I, I can change their masses, but that's it. Uh, I can add more masses. Okay, yeah, this is uninteresting. Let me go to Explorer 1D where we might be able to do more. Yeah, yeah, we can now add more balls. So let me do this. I can actually uh, do a kind of purpose-made simulation of Newton's cradle. So, uh, you know, I've done the Newton's, I've tried to do, and I've done Newton's cradle with the Algodoo, uh, which is a kind of realistic simulation, does all the pendulum thing and all that. That has its own value. Uh, the one kind of slight issue I have with the Algodo simulation in that context is sometimes it does weird things. It glitches out for no reason. This simulation is far less likely to glitch out. So I can set it up and I have some reasonable degree of confidence that it won't do weird things. <laughs> um, it'll just do the things I want it to do. Uh, so, all right, I need to... Um, Set it up with the right velocities so that these things don't oops, move around weirdly. So in a Newton's cradle, the setup you have is you have um, four bolts, or, or the version I have, you can have any number of bolts, but the version I have is you have four bolts that are, um, that are at rest and I can lift one ball and let it hit the rest of them. So I can have one ball coming with some speed, hit these four balls at rest. And I have a little bit of a gap between the balls. I think that's going to be fine. Let me just to make sure they all have exactly zero velocity. Uh, if they don't, that could mess things up. Yeah, they all have exactly zero velocity. All right, uh, let's just uh, run the simulation and see. Um, yeah, okay, um, well, well yeah. let me just let it run and not interrupt it. Uh, if I click this, I don't know what it'll do. Will it, uh, let me not click it just because I don't know if uh, it'll go, like initialize everything. Okay, I'm just gonna let it run, let it strike, and once it's done the interesting things, then I'll bring it to a stop. Okay, that's kind of the same as what um, our original Newton's Cradle did. But let me see if I can uh, reset. Yeah, okay. And let it run slower. And we'll go frame by frame so that we can look at the details a little bit better. The kind of the details that might have been missed when you are looking at either the Algodo simulation or the real life version of Newton's Cradle. So this is going to strike. And as it's striking, let me do just the frame by frame. So frame by frame. So you can see that when this ball one strikes a ball two, ball one comes to complete stop and ball two, if you are able to see this velocity vector, you'll see that it has the exact same velocity ball one did. 
Uh, this is a kind of the feature that you can derive for elastic collision between two objects of the same mass where the target object was at rest. You can go through the method to show that, oh yeah, the, in the collision, the one that came in will come to a stop. The one that struck will go out with the same velocity. So it goes. Now two is actually moving from here to here. It's a small distance, but it's moving. And like three frames and then hits three. Now it's a three that carries on the motion. Two is at a stop. So what looks like one interaction in that, you know, real life uh, demonstration or even in Algodoo, especially with the balls touching, you can see individual interactions. But in this simulation, you can see that it's a one, two, three, it's going to be four separate collisions. It's not actually one ball came in, one ball went out. It's a one ball came in, made the next ball move. That made the next ball move, that made the next ball move, that made the next ball move. Um, so, all right, so that's one demo. Let's uh, make it more fun. Let's uh, see what happens if we have two balls coming in. Um, and can I make it so that I wish? Oh, okay, that's good, that's good. Uh, I do want to see the actual velocity values. So that way I can make them the same. So let me make this 0 0.5. And for two, I'm going to make that 0 0.5 as well. So now this is the scenario where two balls come in. So one and two, they're moving at the exact the same velocity, so they won't collide with each other. And then let's see what happens. Yeah, let's first see what happens at normal speed, and then we'll step through a one at a time. Kind of the same thing you saw with the uh, Newton's cradle happens, uh, or the, with the other simulation or the real life object. So let's now step it one frame at a time and try to make sure that um, we understand all the like quick little things that apparently happen. Right, it's about to collide. I'm gonna zoom in and look at it from um, frame by frame perspective. So one frame. Okay, it's going to collide real soon. Okay, I think uh, next frame. Okay, it collides. Uh, so two and three collided. Three is moving. Two is at rest. And in the time as the three is about to collide with the four, let's see what happens. One collides with the two. So one is at rest. Two is moving again. Um, three collided the four. Four is moving. Three is at rest. But two is now moving. It's going to collide into three. As that happens, this is moving. 5 collided the 4, it's moving, 4 is at rest. Now 3 is going to collide with the 4, and 4 is moving, 5 had nothing else to collide with, so it went. went. So what looks like, you know, one interaction in um, in the Newton's Cradle, the real-life demo, you know, two balls came in, two balls went out. It's, uh, um, can I count the collisions? 1, 2, 3, 4 maybe four times two, eight collisions, dead or seven, <laughs> some large number of collisions. And this uh, actually, I, in my view, illustrates the power of conservation law approach. So even though this is actually quite complicated series of uh, interaction, um, if you when you're analyzing it um, algebraically, you actually didn't have to take into account all the intermediate collisions. As long as you had the confidence that momentum is conserved and energy is conserved with each interaction, you can just do the analysis from the very beginning to the end. You don't have to go through all the intermediate interactions. All right, let's uh, finish up this uh, simulation with the other um, you know, three balls. You've seen that before. Oh, and this time we can actually see exactly what happens so that three balls can go out. Um, so we'll just start with the slow and then we'll just uh, look at it frame by frame. Up it here. All right, let's do frame by frame. So three collides with the four, four moves. Okay, three is at rest. In the next uh, amount of time, four collides is five, five is moving, two collided three, three is moving. Uh, one hasn't collided with anything yet, okay. Uh, now in the next uh, time, one collides with two, two is moving, three collides with four, uh, four is moving, three is at rest, four collide, wait, did it? Yeah, co four, no, no, four didn't collide, no, five did a collision a while back. It just didn't have anything to collide with now. So five just keeps on moving. K, 
Okay, in the next frame of time, to collide the three, it's not moving. Four and five didn't have anything to collide with, so they keep moving. And now that three is moving, it doesn't have anything to collide with, so it'll just continue to move. So, you know, three came in, three went out, <laughs> and there's a more complicated set of interactions that leads to that happening. Um, and let's just end with the uh, full completeness sake, let's do the, the remaining two that you've seen the demo of um, with uh, uh, both the real time, the, the real life uh, demo of Newton's Cradle and the uh, Algodo simulation. So we have this. Uh, I'll run the next one in real time, uh, normal time. Yeah. So here with all those collisions, one ends up at rest and the rest uh, are able to just move on. Um, and uh, the exam the case where five balls came in and five balls will go out. And uh, in some sense, it, this is, oh, well, <laughs> I guess that's all. Well. Um, it's the boring case uh, where, you know, nothing is happening. Now, you can use conservation law uh, strategy when nothing is happening, because when nothing happens, um, the quantities that you are interested in, they're even more likely to be conserved. So, uh, so this is one uh, kind of reproducing some of the things you've seen. Uh, 2D is actually the fun one. Uh, it can demonstrate some of the well, it can demonstrate the, what I was showing in lecture with um, um, uh, with the collisions in 2D. So for that to work, the way you should set it up is one of the balls at rest. And the other ball, let's say, um, uh, coming. And head-on collision is actually not going to be all that interesting. You want need a little bit of an angle. And I think you want to trace out the path then you can see after the collision that these two paths are perpendicular to each other. So one of the properties of elastic collisions with two objects of equal mass, um, equal mass, so elastic, equal mass, and, um, and one of the target at rest. Um, that, uh, that'll lead to the feature that you are seeing here. The path of the two balls are at 90 degrees. And if you play billiards, um, you that you might have been taught that at some point as a way to angle your shots correctly and all that stuff. And this uh, that particular factoid happens to be true for many different collision parameters. So um, now when it's uh, like a head-on collision, it's uh, mathematically true in a vac vacuous sense, in the sense that the dot product between the final velocity and the dot product of uh, that product between the final velocity and this velocity is a zero because one of the vectors is zero. That's the, in the vacuous sense in which that's true. Um, that only happens for head-on collision. If you set it up for any other parameter where it's a little bit off of head-on collision, then you know this initial velocity won't go to zero, but it's still perpendicular so that there that product will be zero. And it remains true for really glancing collisions where very little of the velocity transfers to the target object. They are still at 90 degrees. If I can make it even more glancing. Oh, yeah. And here it's still true because this velocity is zero. The product between this and the other velocity is also zero. The mathematical factor doesn't change just because nothing happened. Uh, are they close enough? Uh, two. Okay. A little bit more. All right. Now that should be close enough. Uh, I, I wish I could make it more glancing. So, um, so between those collision parameters, how much this is deflected changes. What remains the same is the relative direction between this vector and this vector, that's 90 degrees. And there are many other things you can do with the simulation. Um, I guess I'll leave that for you to play with. That's the really the one advantage of simulation, that you don't have to listen to someone else talking only. You can just play with it yourself, and um, it, it doesn't have the same kind of difficulty there might be with a, a physical setup, where you need the right equipment and all that. With all this, all you need is a computer or even a tablet or even a phone, because it's an HTML5 simulation.